welcome to my channel. Today I am going to be showing you how to crochet the Ruby Baby Blanket by Cherry Blossom Crochet. Now, before I go any further, there is a little bit of a backstory to this pattern. There is some information about yarn and there are a few other bits and bobs I want to blabber on about for a few minutes. So before I go any further, for those of you who are not in the least bit interested <laughs> in anything I have to say, which is totally fine by me, or if this is your second time viewing the video and you've already heard everything I'm about to say, in the description box below, if you click the arrow and expand the box, I have timestamps. Now, timestamps are basically little, well, <laughs> timestamps, <laughs> I don't know how to describe it, they're little numbers. If you click the number, next to the description for whichever section you want to jump to. If you click that, YouTube will take you immediately to that section of the video. So you can cut out anything you don't want to hear. So in the description box, I have timestamps. So there will be timestamps for things like the yarn I am using, information about the pattern, row one, row two, row three, any bits of information you may need. If you just want to crack on and do the pattern, call cool by me. That's what the timestamps are for. So now I've got that all out of the way. If you do want to hear my chatter in the beginning, <laughs> grab a cup of tea and get settled because I want to tell you about the backstory to this blanket and how I came to be hosting someone else's pattern on my channel. Back in January, January, I think, January time, I had, um, if you follow me on social media, you may have noticed I had a very large delivery from Snuffle Bean Yarn of Colour Crafter, Shapier's Colour Crafter. Now, I've never used that acrylic before. Um, she's always raving about it and I've heard lots of good things, so I wanted to try it too. Now, first off, let me show you the colours I used in this blanket because they're amazing. I, in real life, I cannot tell whether or not this pink is being picked up correctly by my camera. It is the brightest neon highlighter pink. It's similar to Fiesta by Stylecraft, but much, much nicer. It's a nicer neon. It's not as harsh on the eyes. It's a very pretty, very bright, but very pretty pop of neon. And this, I'm obsessed with this pink. So let me show you the yarn colors that I've used for this palette, for this blanket. First off, this very dark color around the outside is a sort of plummy dark gray. It is my absolute favorite shade of gray in this range. I have so many balls of this. <laughs> You'll be seeing it a lot more on my channel. And this is, I'm gonna to attempt to say these, um, probably forgive my lack of accent, but polaire. So this is a gorgeous, gorgeous, plummy charcoal gray. I also used another shade of gray, surprise, there's quite a lot of them. This is Rotterdam. Now. This again, a lovely shade of gray. It's this sort of darker one here, running alongside the Polaire. I think it's quite interesting how they look different in the ball <laughs> compared to worked up, or maybe it's just the lighting in here, showing them as, but they almost look like completely different yarns. I also used uh, uh, Wolviga, Wolvega. Again, another very pretty gray. You can see sort of the color sequence that I use them in like this. I then also used St. Nicholas. Very, very pretty gray, this one. I'm gonna put this one up here. And then the pink I was just telling you about. It seems a little bit blown out on my screen. You can almost, you can see the reflection on, look at the, look at my skin, how it's picking up the glow from this amazing, oh, Mechelen, 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 I don't know. I really shouldn't bother trying to pronounce these, but this is just beautiful. And like I say, nicer, nicer on the eyes than the Fiesta and Stylecraft. And also whilst I mentioned Stylecraft, the um, Colour Crafter, I found 
much, much softer than Starcraft. It seems to be a little bit looser spun than Starcraft. Um, if you've ever used, I'm trying to think, Ice Magic Light. Have you ever used Ice Magic Light? Slightly thicker, slightly softer. It's just like that. So if you've used that and you like it, you will love the Colour Crafter. It is, I know you can't feel it, the squish factor on it. <laughs> it is genuinely, I found it a little bit nicer than Starcraft to work with. And it's just a little bit softer, fractionally thicker, looser spun. So yeah, these, these are the colours I used for this particular blanket. So if you fancy trying the Colour Crafter too, you might want to hang around my channel for a little bit longer because there might be a giveaway coming up which involves the Colour Crafter yarn. So stay tuned for more information on that coming over the next couple of weeks. So if you've always fancied trying it but don't want to buy it, then this could be the place you need to be. Anyway, that aside, that's got nothing to do with this blanket. This personal, my personal blanket, I used this yarn and I used a four millimeter hook to create this. I am getting a little bit off topic because primarily I wanted to tell you about this blanket. So as I said, back in January, I received this big shipment of the Colour Crafter and immediately started on a hunt for something I wanted to make, patterns I wanted to use. And I stumbled across, um, it's a defunct, so I'm not entirely sure how I got to it, um, a old blog um, by Cherry Blossom Crochet. It's a lady called Claire, and she has the most beautiful, or had, I should say had, the most beautiful patterns, all free, up on her blog. I'd noticed sort of in her small print, she didn't want people obviously just doing tutorials. It's, it's always nice to get permission. So. I dropped her an email to basically say, I'm really loving playing with this blanket. Is there any way I'd be able to feature it on my channel? I was very surprised that she emailed me back to say not only, yes, go ahead, use it. She also said that she has no intention of reinstating her blog or her pattern. She doesn't crochet anymore. And if I wanted to go ahead and take full credit for this pattern and do what I want with it, I was free to. But I... <laughs> I know what it's like to have credit taken away from you. So I am always the first person to say if it's mine, if it's something I've come up with, if it's my particular original pattern, or if it's not, because there's nothing worse than someone taking credit for something somebody else did. So this is very clearly not my pattern. What I said to Claire was, one day, <laughs> whenever it is, if you feel the urge to reinstate your blog and all your beautiful patterns, let me know and I can then direct all of you guys to her. So at the moment, I have nowhere I can send you where you can see all her beautiful work or the pattern. So she's very kindly given me permission, as I say, to film this tutorial and I'm going to put her pattern for the baby blanket size um, I'm going to put that on my blog as a temporary measure and hopefully, hopefully one day Claire will decide that she's coming back to the game, at which point I can take it down or redirect you or whatever. It's quite sad that she, she felt like taking down her blog completely. So anyway, that's a little bit of the backstory. So I would like to right at this moment say a massive thank you to Claire. Um, for giving me permission for filming this beautiful baby blanket. As I said, it's got nothing to do with me. I literally just used this amazing new yarn, or new to me, and created a blanket. And this is my personal blanket. So often I make blankets and donate them, or I make sample pieces for my channel. So when I'm doing little motifs and things, it's very rare I actually start and finish a full size blanket. So this one, I can't get it all in shot, it is huge. It's big enough that it goes across my lap <laughs> quite happily. It's, I don't know, can you see how big this is? It is massive. That's enough waffling about the blanket. I don't really know what else to say. It's an awesome pattern and I hope you enjoy making it. 
So we're going to be making a tiny little sample version of the Ruby Baby Blanket. And for the little sample, I'm going to be using Karen Simply Soft, purely because it's a bit thicker and you can see what I'm doing a bit more clearly. I'm going to be using a six millimeter hook. And I believe the colors I'm using are Bone and Victorian Rose. So starting with my pink, you're going to pop a slip knot on your hook. So the Ruby Baby Blanket is a pattern multiple of 10 plus 13. So what that means is you chain 10 repeats of 10 for as wide as you want your blanket to be and then you add 13 more chains right at the very end. So for my large, large scale um, Ruby Baby Blanket, I believe I chained 163, something like that. Um, for the baby blanket size, it's 123. But for this sample, we're just going to go ahead and chain 43, which is 10, 10, 10, plus 13. So I'm going to chain 43. Um, feel free to pause the video and then come back and meet me at this point when we both have 43 chains hanging from the hook. So I've got my 43 chains for this small sample size and I am going to actually be working into the back bumps rather than the chain itself. So you are free to work normally as, as you would just going into like the top of the chain here so put me your hook through here. All I'm going to be doing is working into the back bump. So see this loop when you look at your chain? Little back bump. I will do a clearer video on working into the back bump and why I do it. But for now, you can work into any section of the chain that you would like. So to start, you're going to be popping a double crochet into the fourth chain from your hook. Now this loop on your hook does not count as a chain. You want to be counting these chains that are hanging down from the hook. So it'd be working to the fourth. So count backwards, one, two, three, four. And now because I'm working into the back bump, I'm just going to be popping it under this back bump here of the fourth chain. But like I said, you go ahead and pop it into whichever section of the chain you would like and just pop a double crochet straight into that fourth chain. Now you are going to put a double crochet into the next three chains. And that's your beginning start. So now you are going to skip two chains and put a double crochet into the next four. So skip two and then put one double crochet in the next four chains. So you've got this weird little point down section, which is like the valley for the ripple blanket. Now we need to create the peak. So chain two and put four double crochets into the next chains. So don't skip any, just one double crochet into the next four chains straight away, no skipping. So 
So you can see you've got your skipped chains here. Let me lay this down, it might be a bit easier for you to see. You've got your skipped chains here and your chain two here with no stitches skipped. So you're going to repeat this little section all the way down until you're left with six stitches. So skip two, double crochet in the next four, chain two, and then a double crochet in the next four again. Skip two, double crochet in the next four, chain two, double crochet in the next four. So feel free to pause the video. I will write that just here so you've got a visual reminder of what you're doing and I shall meet you over here when we've got six chains left. Okay, so I've come to the end of my little sample piece. I've got six chains left, but hopefully yours is looking something a little bit like this. So for every two chains that you've skipped, you've mirrored it by adding two chains here. So I can make it a bit more pronounced. Yours might not be as up and down, it may be more of a wave, but you can kind of play with it just to make sure that it's going up and down as you'd like. So we're at the final six chains here. So you're going to skip two and pop a double crochet in those two chains immediately after your skipped one. So skip two, one double crochet into the next, another double crochet into the next chain. Then in this second to last chain, you're going to put two double crochets all into the same chain. And then end with one double crochet right in that very last chain. like so. And that is your setup row. On to row two. Okay, row two. I'm going to be changing colour at the end of row two. So to start, chain one and turn your work. Now that chain one does not count as a stitch. And you're going to immediately put a double crochet straight into the top of that double crochet from the row below, your very first stitch. Let's just pop a double crochet straight in there, like that. So your chain one is just a tiny turning chain. Now, I was a little bit dubious of just doing chain one because I'm so used to doing chain two, but trust me, it works out fine. It may feel a little bit weird and tight, but it keeps the edges nice and straight. So you're immediately going to put two double crochets into the next stitch, both into the same stitch, two double crochets. And then you're going to pop a double crochet in the next two stitches. So at the start of your row, you will have five stitches worked over four. So you've got one, an increase in the next one, which is two stitches in one, a single one and a single one just standing alone. So you start and end the rows with five. So now you're going to skip the next two stitches. So ignore those two and you're going to pop a double crochet in the next three stitches, which will bring you right up to back to your chain two space over here. So skip two and put one double crochet in the next three stitches. Now, 
Now into this chain two space, we're going to work our puff stitches. Now, it is completely up to you how many yarn overs you want for your puffs. So in my um, Color Crafter blanket, because the yarn is a little bit finer, I made sure I was yarning over four times, so I had quite a nice, generous, fat puff stitch. For this one, because it's thicker yarn, I'm only going to be yarning over three times. But disclaimer in advance, you can make your puff stitches as fat or as skinny as you would like. So to do the three puff, which I'm going to show you now, rather than the four stranded, which I did on my other blanket, you yarn over and go straight into that chain two space. Catch the yarn at the back, come through, that's once. And again, yarn over, go into the space, catch the yarn at the back, draw up a loop. So that's two. Third time, yarn over, go into the chain two space, catch the yarn at the back, draw up a loop. So that's what I mean, I've just done it three times for a three sort of stranded puff. So you will have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven loops on your hook. Now, if you wanted to do a four, you would do that again. Yarn over, go in, catch the yarn and come back. That's what I did for my Color Crafter blanket. But as I say, this is fatter yarn. So to complete your puff, yarn over and draw through the first six loops on your hook. Not that final one there, just the first six. So yarn over and draw through the first six loops on your hook. And you'll have two remaining. The same for if you're doing a four strand puff, yarn over and pull through everything bar that last loop. So you want to be left with two loops on your hook. And then to secure your puff, yarn over and pull through both loops. Chain two. And you're going to pop another puff stitch into that same chain two space. So yarn over, go in, catch the yarn, come back through. Pull up a loop, make sure you're pulling it up. Yarn over, go in, come back through. And one more time, yarn over, go in, come back through. Then yarn over and pull through everything bar that last loop on your hook. Yarn over, pull through two. So you've got in your chain two space, two puff stitches with chain two in between. Now you're going to pop a double crochet in the next three stitches. Skip two, double crochet in the next three stitches. Then into your chain two space, puff stitch, chain two, puff stitch, all into the same space. So you keep doing that for as wide as your blanket is three double crochet, skip two, three double crochet, puff stitch, chain two, puff stitch, all the way along until you get to this very end section over here. So I'm just going to quickly whiz and do this bit, and then I can show you how you finish the end row and how to change colour. So I'm just doing my last three double crochets of this row and I'm down to the end six stitches including those chains you skipped right in the beginning over here. So to finish your row, skip two, pop a double crochet in the next two 
double crochet stitches. So skip two, double crochet, and then a double crochet into the next. So you've got two stitches left. In this next stitch, you're going to put two double crochets into the same stitch. So you've got four stitches worked over three. And then right into the very end, you've got your turning chain here. We're going to be putting the hook in there. I'm also going to be changing color. Now, if you don't want to change color and you're going to continue in the same, then you just end with a double crochet into the top of your turning chain here. So I'm going to half finish my stitch and then I'm going to bring in my new color. So to end the row, you end on one double crochet into the top of this. The chain three, it's a bit of a pain to try and get in, crush your way in there. It's also quite easy to miss. So I'm just going to half finish my double crochet stitch. And when I've got two remaining loops, I'm going to stop I'm going to cut the end and leave a bit of a generous yarn tail here. And I'm going to bring in my new colour, which is bone. And again, leave a bit of a tail. And then just finish off your stitch with the new colour, like so. So you should have five stitches at each end. And then in between, you've got three double crochet your puffs, three double crochet, and you've skipped stitches all the way along. So it should all be lining up nicely. And now I'm gonna show you how to do row three, which is how you would now continue the pattern for the rest of your blanket until it is as long as you would like. Alrighty, row three and how you finish the entire body of your blanket. So you will keep repeating this row for the entire length of your blanket. So chain one, which does not count as a stitch, turn your work and put a double crochet straight into the top of just chained from. Two double crochet into the very next stitch. And then a double crochet into the next two stitches. Skip two, and now we're gonna be doing exactly what we did in the last row. Skip two, and put three double crochet into the top of the next three stitches. However, there's a slight variation because this is where your puff is. So I'll show you exactly where to put that third and final double crochet. So skip two, Pop a double crochet in here. It should be nice and clear now. I've changed colour. Double crochet in here. And now you are about to put a double crochet right on top of that puff. So if you look, because we left the two loops before drawing through, you have a nice sort of, see if hopefully this is picking up on camera if I put here. So this is my puff stitch. And this here is sort of like a stitch on top you can see. You're going to put your hook right into the top of your puff stitch. Then into your chain two space, you're going to do your puff, chain two, puff, all into the same place. Now, if you're doing fatter puffs, like I did on my Colour Crafter blanket, what you'll find is this next, the top of this next puff stitch from the row below can be a little bit tricky to see, especially if you've got a really generous fat puff, it tends to overlap slightly. So you want to move your puffs, if they're in your way, just slide them along that chain two space for a second, and then you can clearly see that gap and stitch on top of your puff stitch. So just like on this side, you're going to pop a double crochet right into the top of that puff stitch. Then 
and you can sort of move those, slide those puffs back. So you can see it's quite easy to miss this stitch when everything starts getting nicely filled out in these chain two spaces. So carry on just as before, all the way along the length of your blanket. Skip two, double crochet in the next three. That final one will be the top of your puff. In the chain two space, puff stitch, chain two, puff stitch. And then making sure you don't accidentally miss the top of the next puff, you're gonna have three double crochet coming down. You'll soon see if you're missing this stitch because as you can see from here, everything is lining up nicely. The puffs are in line, your skipping two are in line. The minute it starts to skew off or if you find that you've run out of space and you've still got an extra stitch to do, these chain two spaces are only for puff stitches. No double crochets go in there. If you find that you're ending and you you haven't got enough room and you need to put your third double crochet in there, then just check that you haven't, it's this one here, this one can throw you off. So just keep a careful eye. After a while, you'll get used to seeing exactly like the top, but that's my only hint. So you carry on just like we did on this row and I will meet you back over here when I've finished my final set of puff stitches. Okay, so I've just finished up my last repeat and I'm left with six stitches, just like before. So to end, skip those two skip stitches there, double crochet in the next, double crochet in the next, two double crochets into that second from last stitch, both into the same space, and then end with a single, a single, that always sounds confusing, with one double crochet right into the top of that very last stitch. So you've always got five on the ends and three with puffs for the main body of your blanket. So you carry on and create as many rows as you would like your blanket to be. And then in my next video, I will show you how to square off the bottom and put a border on.